Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Tiano, the Lasses of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Wallace Lover, but Supreme Court intervenes in Wallace's legislation. Oh no! Reports from across Maryland describe the situation in Washington, D.C. as the Capitol has become engulfed in turmoil between the Wallace administration and the Supreme Court of the United States recently. The Wallace administration forwarded a piece of legislation called the Education Rebudgeting Act towards the Senate in an attempt to rebalance funding towards schools across the United States, but the Supreme Court has declared the bill to be unconstitutional and said that the bill is filled with obvious setbacks against African Americans at schools throughout the country, and has been said to be a deliberate attack on African American populations' rights and freedoms in the United States, as said by one Supreme Court justice. But Despite the protests from the Supreme Court, Wallace's base of supporters found no wrong within the administration's piece of legislation. President Wallace himself responded by accusing the Supreme Court of attacking his rights as the leader of the United States and repairing the broken education system of the United States by directly funding towards proven efficient centers of education, rather than the unneeded schools, at least from the budget. Supporters of the National stood beyond President Wallace, as many have come to the steps of the Supreme Court with a variety of chants and banners, some demanding that the Supreme Court to stop acting so politically and to realize that the president is working for the more patriotic Americans. However, the black community stood in defiance of Wallace's supporters and stood with the by with the Supreme Court. Many have found angry with Wallace and his actions actively protesting the president and various MPP associations due to the distress of the pact with the president's proposal. As said by one African-American man, this is the United States of America, not Germany or Japan. We are here to find justice for all, so how do we dare accept the actions of such a vile attack against the already small education provided for African-American children? Some larger cities are even reported work protests and strikes supporting the Supreme Court against the Education Rebudgeting Act. Complain all you want. It doesn't matter Wallace in the Wallace battles Supreme Court in a second case for school defunding. Reporters warn the nation not to arrest after the exhaustion of the fight for the Education Rebudgeting Act. It has been indicated that in the past few days, a new battle set to emerge as the Supreme Court has taken issue with the Wallace administration's continued steps to produce effects of the act. This time, however, President Wallace and his administration coordinated efforts with state and local leadership to produce laws which will lay down the same effects of the act while bypassing the federal government. The President's administration has labeled the opening of another flight or fight from the Supreme Court to have been wrongful and politically charged at best, <clears throat> without consideration for the well-being of the nation, as said by an aide of the President accompanying several within the administration to openly debate the Supreme Court of the United States. Wallace's administration has worked towards discrediting the second battle already, and Wallace supporters across the country have supported these notions. These justices think that just because they disagree with the beliefs of the President and the MPP that they can manhandle the law to make it fit their view? That's dictatorship. We support Wallace's success. One member of the Nationals declared on the steps of the Supreme Court how, today, however, the Supreme Court has found support from a variety of groups within the U.S. as social spheres. Many of them, the RDC, have accused the President of attempting to undo the political processes of the United States government by appealing directly to the state, uh, despite, despite the ongoing contestment within Congress, as said by a Democratic senator who wished to remain anonymous, of course. <clears throat> Furthermore, the African American community has felt outraged once more, as seeing President Wallace's second attempt has given rise to wealth of prospects or uh, protests from American cityscapes to the countryside. I will well within power. Supreme Court will give us judgment because the Education Rebudgeting Act survived the Supreme Court, which all these events just popped in the first day, so. Weeks of constitutional evaluation, social protests, news talks about the bill and the defense by the Wallace administration have finally found its end today in the Supreme Court. Reports have shown that the administration has come out successful in riding upon a 5-4 vote in the Supreme Court in favor of Wallace's piece of legislation. Barely surviving, this means the act with acquisition of attacking African American schools with a slashing budget has become approved, even if just barely. While many members of the administration have called the approval of the bill to be a rousing success for the education system and economy of the United States, many in the nation have voiced their anger over the process. Across the country, many within the, within the support base for President Wallace have expressed a direct dissatisfaction with the process in which the bill happened to be passed, declaring that the Supreme Court's audacity in challenging the bill to be a disgrace on America's morals as a strong and righteous nation. Despite ongoing efforts by the Wallace administration to win over the South, many small organized groups have found out that Wallace's system simply cannot get done what it desires to and thus have defected to even more radical positions within the NPP. Uh, across the pond, however, <clears throat> The more liberal-minded population of the U.S. is not any more happy over the failure to destroy the piece of legislation as it moved on, citing the closeness of the vote as being a disgrace on the freedoms and rights guaranteed to Americans. Following this, record numbers of voters leaving the NPP to join within the RDC has been reported, as many found disapproval with the NPP as a whole after the actions was. Moreover, the African-American community has become infuriated over the actions of both the President and the Supreme Court, and large numbers of strikes, protests, and even riots have reported across cities within the U.S. Well, darn you too, then. We won. What we'll decrease mostly in its costs, just by a little bit, not very much. Everyone votes are trying to support the Democratic Party, and things happen. <clears throat> Manhattan wa marches, Wallace Wales. Flashes. Other oh, street of the Manhattan grace presence and are they, are they bird's eyes there? They saw a wealth of marches, each screaming and waving signs around the downfall of the American education system, calling President Wallace a child hating monster of the president. Afterwards, images slipped to these protesters clashing with New York City police officers, exchanging blows as bricks and batons go flying. Bird, what the F is happening out there? Why is Manhattan burning to the effing ground as we speak? Wallace demanded. Well, you see, sir, the situation is fairly complicated, Bird responded. Uh, being met with a frank, no crap from the president. 
During the successes of your presidency, as well as some of the possible missteps, the pact has been expanding in different parts as well, in particular some folks from the Democrats and Progressives, who share some similarly radical views, calling themselves the Marxists or protesting the recent reforms of or the education system. Whilst the jaw nearly hit the floor, you're telling me that these mad dudes can't change to learn a little bit about how good they have it in this gosh darn country? What's so bad about it, having the guts to say that it's the Japanese who need to get bombed next, or are they pissed off to learn that we have some patriotic state-driven backgrounds? F. The president screamed, kicking his own chair over in anger over the situation at Manhattan. Bird, you gotta make sure to play everything you have into your sleeves into New York, alright? I don't know what this movement is getting traction. They'll try to run us on the ground if they see any more of this, this crap. The president stammered right out, right away, sir. As Bird was preparing to do his, his order, he froze alongside the president at the song coming from the TV sets of the protesters. What did you learn in school today, dear little boy of mine? What did you learn in school today, dear little boy of mine? I learned that Washington never told a lie. I learned that soldiers seldom die. I learned that everyone's free. And that's what the teacher said to me. That's what I learned in school today. That's what I learned in school. But learn more to keep going like that. Urban voters trend towards this Marxist cause on pretty much everything, which is kind of unique and interesting. Uh, so, of course, encouraging patriotic curricula. Over here, if you like, like to do that again, please go ahead. Uh, we're going to about put God back in schools. Now, I don't want to do the state's own salaries just yet. In a little bit, I think we will want to. But I really want to see how far we can go with this whole segregation and stuff. Um, I encourage you to follow the southern states, though. President Wallace believes in states' rights, like me. A state should be able to make their own decisions, especially when it comes to an issue as important as segregation. That said, the southern model has proven itself time and time again as the most effective model for the American people. President Wallace encourages the states of this great union to adopt the system of separate but equal treatment in all regards. But most importantly, education. Are the children not our future? Of course Local they coordination are. with the president survived Supreme Court. <clears throat> a second battle against President Wallace and the president's administration began weeks ago, and with it came weeks of activism from within the government and outside. We're entering from historical study over the interpretations of federal versus local governments to protest by social groups across the country today. After the dust finally settles, the Supreme Court justices have declared a victory for the Wallace administration in by for a vote, making it one of the most divisive uh, decisions in Supreme Court history. Oh, look at this. Nice. Um, in the aftermath of the second battle, however, minds were racing across the country, where the Wallace administration found exhausted out of the continuous resources having to be poured in a legal battle. Movement is slow in the, in the White House, however, across the country, Wallace's support former support is stirring. The Supreme Court has gone too far in extent, extensions of power, even if we manage to win, said one member of the Nationals holding a large protest in a city square. Surely we won this time, but what about the next time, and then one after that? We can't keep fighting this gosh darn battle against the government every time a president tries to do something that makes a few people cry. It's just defunded schools, for Christ's sake. So overall, many are flocking to find support elsewhere or somewhere for the president who may not be, win every battle. Beyond his own support, the rest of the United States appears to be furious with the Supreme Court. Huge gatherings of Democrats, members of the Progressives, and direct spokespersons of the African American community have occurred in cities such as Chicago, New York City, LA, and more. You're wrong. We are tired. We'll make change, shouted one protester. From atop a vehicle to crowd a crowd of supporters below, where the government won't look after us, we'll take think, care of things ourselves. Several conflicts between protesters and police forces occurred, where numerous counts of vandalism and battery have more been seen in the streets or seen in these riots. To heck with them. We got it. Shut this crap down. We can put God back in schools. Why not? We'll do that one first. I like sick of getting stuff. Now, could to start this season or this semester through Congress? Oh, look at this. The education system within the United States of America remains one of the key factors in many Americans' success in the country, giving millions the ability to learn more than they ever could before. However, in a strange act of reform, the Wallace administration has found it pertinent to push for reforms regarding the curriculum of education the children are receiving, with some apparently having said that a reinforcement of, our, of American ideals and belief is what is necessary for the success of this country's future. The also National Education Curriculum Reform Act, or NECRA, has issued a set of reforms to bring education closer to the history of the United States' involvement in the world, such as the Second World War, and other re-examinations of event, past events, such as the American Civil War. I don't say anyone could dislike this. We're going to be teaching the youngsters about the strengths of the country and how they ought to be proud of it. What's wrong with all that? President George C. Wall stated in a press conference following the passage of the bill. Many of the nationalists have congratulated the president for his senatorial success in passing Necro, believing that these educational reforms will promote the American spirit, encourage a greater devotion to the country than some within this country right now could ever hope to know. Meanwhile, groups of teachers have assembled in a series of areas to demonstrate their dissatisfaction with Necro and other educational policies of George, uh, President George Wallace. Just because President Wallace has an act for encouraging patriotism at every corner does not mean he can force down every child's throat. Besides, challenging current systems are about pathway to growth. Not an encouragement to stand against a country, argue one math teacher from Vermont, leading a group of mathematics teachers from whose job may become endangered due to Necro's requirements and demanding more history of teachers across the country. Now the children will be more patriotic. I love it. More war sport? Great. That's what we need. Academic base gets a little worse. Whatever. And we look, look, we look better overall. By God in heaven. Wallace and LeMay sat apart from another in the Oval Office, both staring at the same set of reports that had come in in the morning from the communications office. The report has showed a detailed graph of a continuously rising line, although it began tapering off. Popularity report is measured within Louisiana, the next one South Carolina, then Georgia, Florida, all of the same exact decline. Crap, President Wallace said as he rocketed from the chair across LeMay. Gosh, what do we do now? He boomed in the, op in the room. Well, sir, the reporters don't necessarily send a death warrant for us yet, he said, as Wallace turned to his vice president. What do all these states have in common, he asked. He took out a Bible from the president's desk. The presentation was about the beginning of the Madison's County High near Jackson, Mississippi. 
The governor of Mississippi, a Baptist Baptist, and a thousand people lying behind him gathered to try and capture witness a mysterious event. The governor stood up to the podium, announcing to the crowd, Good afternoon to the great powerful citizens of Alabama. President Wilson has decided to renew his duties as president of the people of Mississippi. President Wilson and Pastor Martin, the past and the present, both stepped up forward towards the microphone as Wallace laid his hand upon the, Bi the time of the Bible. President George Corley Wallace Jr., do you swear by the Christian God that you uphold your duties as President of the United States? The pastor asked, I do, the president says, with some, some find it hard to contain their applause. Do you, President Wallace, swear to God, maintain a firm and powerful hand against powerful against powers which seek to undo our God-given freedoms? I do. There are those in this country that stand to undo our freedoms, and I will not bow down to them. The cheers grew strong. Will you use his powers vested in you by the Constitution to uphold tradition and morality in a corrupt and dangerous age? I do, Pastor Martin. In fact, I swear not only by God, but by each and every one of you that I shall fight for your rights and your freedoms. I'm no limp... Uh, spine politician, I'm a believer in God in this country. If you want segregation, you shall have segregation. You are Americans, blacks do not go where you say not to. The citizens gather around, um, abandon their respectful silence, and clap in affirmative applause and cheers to the President of the United States as he stood strong. The sounds given the Bible at this point. They ate it up. Walls is voted based on to be more content with the state of state trials, but class three Senate elections. Oh no! We're going to vote R and D. Now, let's take a look see. Predictions. They're going to lose some. Very solid here. Currently, we're like this. We're going to continue to do this. Because we're going to really hammer home on this whole segregation thing as well. So, we're going to do as best we can. Hopefully, we get the RDs elected because, I mean, at this point, I really want them elected. But, TV tonight. This is how I arrived on the NBC Nightly News, joining several uh, leading congressmen along with the faces of the Republican Democratic presidential race. How are you gentlemen doing tonight? The newscaster said. St. Cross from the political giants, Barry Goldwater and Philip Hart. Good evening, Mr. Rye, Sir Hart. It's a pleasure for Mr. Goldwater and myself to appear tonight for people across the country. I agree, Phil. It's a blessing to be, appear to be in front of my fellow Americans, indeed. Gentlemen, on that notice, tonight you'll be asked to speak about the actions of President Wallace. Is that correct? Rye continued. Absolutely, sir. You see my Republican constituents, and I've all noticed the theme of President Wallace's presidency. A distinct turn towards radical notions to attempt to force freedom rather than guarantee it, Goldwater said. To continue, the Democrats have felt continuously disconnected from President Wallace Senior. Just this past week, he unleashed fury to the people of Mississippi, riling everyone up with, without uniting the divide. It's not right to see the people rage against one another over school kids, Hart continued. Now, if I may ask, have you seen the anger for sad in the American people? Rugg asked. Unfortunately, whether you are a dem or a pub or even a member of the MPP, it's become evident that Wallace unleashes anger across the United States in order to maintain segregation. And the process undone his guarantees of freedom for this party's goals, Goldwater stated. Now, gentlemen, while I do not wish to invalidate your points, what are the possible merits found within the actions of the president? asked the newscaster. Sir, Mr. Goldwater, have I realized a grave matter that appears to have been lost to many supporters of the President Wallace's administration? We're an American people, be it conservative or liberal, facing a world of crisis and scorn of difficulty and suffering, and President Wallace's administration has decided that to solve these issues, it'll bar children from school, as Hart finished. Phil's right. Differences aside, the Republican Democratic Coalition has recognized that radicalism is not the path to follow to guarantee the strength of the U.S. of A. Goldwater concluded, thank you, gentlemen. We here at NBC appreciate your output and hope to serve to educate the American people more than ever before. This has been the NBC Nightly News, and this is how Rag signing off. Time to turn the volume. Nice. Yeah, we got there. The Yankee schools are cool. Um, I forget if I read some before, so. Um, darn those Yankees. They just don't know how to sit down, shut up, and leave the government work to people who actually know what they're doing. They keep protesting the whole idea of segregated schools and really making us look bad. We're going to do something about these protesters at some point before it gets too far out of hand. We either have to double down on the segregated education issue or ease up a bit. Now we can either force segregation through legislation, through all of the union, override the states. Legislation means legal. Threat in action. I want to do that one, but we'll probably roll back segregationist rhetoric as well. Probably. Or we'll just go crash and burn. Segregation isn't for everybody. Fascist wing will grow. Devolutionary education. Play get the northern states. Well, it's February 6th. Lost for federal administrative issues. It is evolved choice. Well, currently, where are we at? So, right now, we have 75, 50, so it doesn't matter who gives a shnikes about whatever. Let's piss everyone else off. And for segregation through legislation, because we probably can. Ultimately, there are, we are the elected government entrusted with upholding the institutions of this great nation. Supreme Court has found segregation to be all American. Southern states have found segregation to be a superior system. Must secure an effective educational system. We must enforce segregation. Just another new beginning. For Francis McCann, uh, every assignment was an adventure. No matter where he went, he always had things to discover and people to meet, which he, why he loved his line of work just so much. Beginning American diplomat had its perks, after all. He could travel the world all year round with all expenses taken care of by old Uncle Sam, and now after India and Scotland, he was assigned to Wolofia. Many of his colleagues would have protested such an assignment, for they have been seen as a useless relocation in a war-devastated country, and he's looked outside the office window. He had to admit they may have had a point, but that didn't matter to him. Wolofia. Despite the war and the hardships, was only another country among them all. He had the feeling that things would, wouldn't really be any different here, still. He did his best to make himself at home, as thought. He thought, as he began to set up his office, yes, with a little effort, he'd feel like in America no time. By putting his calendar here and his photos on the desk like this, it'd be perfect, and the typewriter would be 
Actually, where, where, where is the typewriter? Oh, all right. Francis remembered where the chocolate hadn't arrived yet. Well, it wasn't that big of a problem anyways, as he brought some reading with him, just in case. Yes, he thought as he finished unpacking his bag to be out home in no time. For, or, after all, anywhere can be paradise as long as you have the will to live. So, we did really well with uh, West Africa here. Um, we got some comments to go through as well. West African Alliance, they did win. We're doing really well, but we're going to blow it all up with the Yankee school system. Um, I think I read this earlier, so if you're going to this game, please go right ahead. But, well, you know what? We're going to go all the way through. Enforce segregation through legislation. Ultimately, we're elected and trust with holding the institutions of the great nation. The uh, Supreme Court has found segregation to be all American, and the southern states have found segregation to be a superior system. Must secure an effective educational system. Must enforce segregation. You know. Prediction, minus 15. We still haven't done enough year uh, damage. No, I don't know about damage, but haven't done enough yet. For what we really get done, it's only March 4th, so uh, we have time to get it all done. And my god, we are going to get it done. Oh, we have Angola as independence. Thank god, we're going to deal with that anymore. At least parts of it. We got to do that too. Um, so we have Angola, a trial balloon. Oh boy. On the streets of Michigan and Massachusetts, a new variety of political buttons appeared in the lapel after LaBelle, Romney, Brooke, Gray for 68, paraded through the Bay State and the Twin Peninsulas. Both popular men in the states are seeming to be quite a market for the buttons and thus for a presidential campaign by pair. Um, Governor Edward Brooke of Massachusetts was certainly surprised to see them, and when he realized Ron was behind the campaign, he touched, was touched and intrigued. They'd be a historic pair of elected Edward Brooke, the first black governor of Massachusetts. A popularly elected black senator in U.S. history would become the first black vice president. George Romney would be the first Mormon president in a nation that had only recently had its first Catholic executive. Segregationists, racists, and bigots would view it as pr po proof positive of the nation's decline. Americans more broadly, however, would recognize as America's promise of freedom and opportunity for all being proven at least a little more true. Oh, he's after confederation. And so Edward Brooke had allowed himself to dream a little. He imagined America where he, having come so far in spite of so much already, would be able to climb another rung on the ladder of American society. He thought of the good he could do. The example he would set up for black Americans around the country, and how it would be a small but important repudiation of America's founding and original sin. Unfortunately, Brooke's hopes was dashed. The buttons vanished, no call from Romney, Romney about a run came. Brooke learned about Romney's campaign collapsing due to financial issues from the newspaper in 1968, it seemed, though. Would not be Romney's years, fill apart, and Barry Goldwater swept up all the support from the rough sides of the political aisle, leaving none for the centrist Romney. History missed. Workers directed, huh? A member of the American sphere, which is good, good, good. Gotta keep in the OFN, though, man. Keep them in the OFN. Um, Angola? Well, do we really give a crap about Angola? Now, since it's a kind of left. So, I mean, I personally don't. Um, home front? Serves manpower? 41.5%? Oh, boy. Formation of the common term, pretty normal stuff. No research there to do. For American sentiment, they're unhappy, they're happy. Other worker and businessman, you know. We're here to try to please as many people as possible while still instituting our own deal arena as well. We are doing 18 billion in surplus. HVA operations thwarted. The Reich knocked Lichtenstein's. Turns as the Reich's intelligence services infiltrated our country with their agents. Thankfully, due to our own counter espionage efforts, we managed to negate their efforts almost completely. This should give our own agents some experience in dealing with hostile elements as well as showing us that perhaps more close to Reich should be kept on the Reich. Good riddance. Eh, we'll see. We have only 172 billion in debt, so that's not bad overall. Slowly cracking down on the debt. G GDP is 76 uh, billion. Polls are updated. Nice. Failure after failure turned up from Congress to the Supreme Court. Whenever uh, the president stepped, he found battle waiting for him, and wherever he decided to produce some change, he found his work slashed and burned by those unwilling to make the country better. <clears throat> If they want to fight me so much for President Thought, then I'll give him a gosh darn fight. He decided that if he was going to appeal to the South, he was going to go as far as possible to the heart of him. Wallace prepared for himself on the muggy afternoon at Lee Circle, New Orleans. His statued eyes of God save Robert E. Lee looked down upon him. And now, President Wallace, the governor of Louisiana, said, eagerly shaking hands with the president. Good afternoon, you patriots who came down in support of your wonderful state. The crowd cheered on as the president shook his head and laughed. Now, I know you all are dedicated citizens of coming out, so allow me to get to the business for all y'all. I am proud. I'm proud of each and every Louisiana in here. Proud as all heck for the tradition and legacy carried all the way from your forefathers who settled here. Together, you honor them all in keeping your image alive in the beautiful city you call home. However, not everyone in this country shares your passions. Rather, actually, very few at all do in some parts of the country. Rather, they seek to call me time for my recent battles. For what, exactly? Want to keep the blacks out of your schools like you want and maintain order? For promising each boy and girl here a future for the patriotism? Rather than appealing to urban leeches? Well, like heck I say, because you know what? You've all seen the news and I have to say I'm pissed. Pissed that those gosh darn Yankees want to go around and let the Afros in without a second thought. Just to put a thorn in your butts and mind. So with all that said, how do we fix this? Get mad, get pissed, get effing raged, go out and tell your leaders you don't want this? Tell them you don't want that disrespect going on inside the very government of the United States. I'll guarantee you rights to wish, but gosh darn, I need help, and so do you. Go to each and every senator, everyone across the, the Honorable South, and teach them, and tell them we need to fix this guy and country before the North breaks it anymore. 
The governor of Louisiana, still behind the president, supportive of his visit to Curtis Peel, Louisiana, but it can help get filled with chills. The chills is a constituent for segregation now, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever ahead, and what was meant to be a simple and encouraging visit. I can't segregate alone. We're going to segregate together. That sounds like a nice date idea. You and me, segregation, why not? Terrible RDC campaign. Well, I ain't going to help anybody now. Minus 12, oh boy. Actually, that's, we're doing better now. That's not good. Uh, here, campaign, let's go. Anything else here? Oh, 2245. Oh, boy. No room for compromise, huh? Why oh, is a little blackmail among friends? We can still pass it if we get one more person. One more person. Override the states. You can find the bill on decision steps. Force segregation through all the union. Effects so. Override the states. So basically, we have to pass it. Um, blackmail the conservatives. Rally the progressives. Pleading to the progressives. 200 political power. Holy crap. How many more days left we have? We got plenty of days. So let's get this one done first. And pleading to the progressive wing, and we'll see. Um, someone, uh, someone says, uh, from the last video, that asterisk in the title is hilarious. Oh, you bet it was. Someone says, I'm tired of walls. Can you play as RFK? I probably could. I played as RFK just a few times, but we'll see. Uh, let's see. Uh, someone says, removing Allied Tropa seems like a good move for me, but it would be cool to see a bridge connecting Gibraltar and Tangier instead of the dam. I think that would be really neat as well. I think that's very neat, actually. Um, let's come over here. How's this going down here? We're doing both those, which is nice. Ship stuff? Sure. Another comment was, I really like the new proxy wars. It truly makes it feel like a Cold War. Just wish that the Reich was more active on the world stage, though, so. We'll see. We'll get there eventually. Someone says, they're glad that they removed the Allied Tropa stuff. Um, someone else says, can we have an Enclave Reborn mod? It's been ages, at least an Enclave mod of the, or Vader in the Middle East. Yeah, maybe eventually. If I've got time, but... Prison Walls. Awaited in the hallway right outside the dining hall where the full strength of the progressive branch of the National Progress Progressive Pack lied. Waiting for the bo both the purpose of the presence and for the dinner to be finally served after this long week. Whether it was fighting inside the pack, dealing with the national protests, or the other issues plaguing the nation on their domestic front. Joining him, R.L.A. Burke and Wilbur Mill sat nervously doing their best to prepare for anything that may happen there. Finally, the three men walked in, causing a wide range of mild applause from exhausted, disgruntled, and hungry men and women in the room. President Walls took to the podium while issuing the wa waiters. Forward to begin the orders. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for being able to attend our meeting tonight. As you've all seen, more than ever before, our pact has grown under our leadership. Det Determined to defect from the RDC's lack, lackadaisical agenda and instead push for it to change, for better men. Whether it be your beliefs or mine, we've grown strong. However, I need you to use that strength, Walls said, as the men and women at the table brace for themselves, some distracted by their, from their orders. Walls continued, many of you will protest, but many are already protesting. But segregation in the northern states is necessary as a national progressive pact's next step forward. Why? Would well, be completely darn honest, I believe in segregation, and with my belief in segregation comes a national belief in segregation. And with more members, our whole entire party grows stronger. So I ask, how in the heck could we not survive for another presidential term without this victory? Gosh darn it, the people are riding out there. Cities are effing burning, you gosh darn cities. Your cities were better than this, so I invoke you to all... Uh, book into you all the courage to rise above the principles and realize that this is about survival. I'm fighting my hardest in my time in the sun, and the sun shall rise to you one all day, to you all one day, if you stand behind me. The Duma's sun choked even from the furious spiel they had just been subjected to. The peer stepped down from the stage, coming back down to take a seat among the table where the senators could finally see the exhaustion of the president as the bags under his eyes seemed to stretch further and further down his face. Maybe the food will win him over. Uh, well, we didn't get any of them. Well, we're going to blackmail the conservatives now. The fall compromised tile, huh? Negotiations. Negotiations. I don't know why we can't get any more of our guys on, our, on board. I, hmm. no, I guess it's Northerners too, so. Let's go on black among friends. Every time President Walsh said, look at the map, he grew more and more disgusted with what he looked at. Battles across the U.S., not with rifles and bombs, but with words and bills. North had to back down, face with Walsh's desire to finally segregate the education system, and every day more and more resources, time, and effort to be dedicated to the process. It was exhausting to everyone, including the president, but in the middle of a few advisors pinpointing possible speeches and campaigns to earn the president's approval, a phone call interrupted the action in the room. Hello, asked President Walsh. A uh, copy of this down, Mr. President, every word of it. I can't be on the phone for too long, but you're going to want to hear this. A raspy voice called back. The men in the room aside from Walsh stood silent as it scratches a pen, meaning pen, paper, and the occasional uh-huh, and are you sure it came from the president? After a few minutes, the president issued a thank you before clicking the phone. Everyone out. LeMay, you ought to stay, but I want everyone out of this room and no one within 30 feet of that iron door for the rest of the night. The men slowly exited the room. LeMay, we have just found a breakthrough in the north. Wallace said frantically, all right, sir, what's going on? Who was that? LeMay responded. Wouldn't say it was not who they are that matters. It's what they said, Wallace said, walking over to the point of the map. They're Pennsylvania. Strong voice under direct opposer of the segregation in the north and absolute opponent of it for anyone in the United States. However, that strong voice of this of his may die down a bit when he may hear we know about the kid he has outside of his marriage that he hangs around and pays, makes payments for. Wallace said, a dude? No. 
No offense, but that's going to be enough to really push him to work with us, LeMay responded. Definitely. When he informed the public of the slant eyed dude, Japanese kid, Curtis, an effing Jap. Wall said LeMay stroke his chin in contemplation. God above, that's a lot to use against a man. Are you sure that you want to leave shotgun him like that? He's giving me heck. He'll get it right back if he doesn't comply. Another beater. We just need, like, one. Where does opportunity strike? Look at this. It's been a little while since President Walls pushed a threat into a big, strong center from Pennsylvania. Days since, with the proceedings going on regarding possible groundbreaking developments of movement segregation northward, the President was anxious, fearful, even pacing around the Oval Office with the passing hours every day. What if he wouldn't back down? What if this backfires? Not a darn word to come forth from that powerful anti-segregationist, not a protest speech, not even so much as a whisper. That is until the Senate proceedings from the day had concluded. News anchors across the country had all begun reporting the same story, the same flip of the entire case of segregation. Now, what it seemed a little small little coalition of senators seemed to be organizing in support of the legislation put forward by the Wallace administration. Legislation permitting the possible expansion of segregation of the education system in the northern states. A coalition headed by a formerly iron willed senator from Pennsylvania who had argued each and every piece of work supported by President Wallace. Senator leaders were baffled. The RDC members in Congress collapsed in an infighting as reported by some newspapers or newscasters. The nation seemed to wonder what could have possibly gotten Wallace the lucky break he needed after the fights he experienced in the legislation process. The mayor came to the office, noticing a wicked grin and strewn across the president's face, prompting him to ask, any reports from the senator? Wallace responded that we didn't get a report, however, we got a whole gosh darn block of Democrats voting for us in the Senate. The president and the vice president shook hands at the newfound success, laughing at the blurry image of the senator's face on the screen. I say poor guy, but some more conservative RDC members will vote for this on our bill to save America. Oh, oh, we got all, oh my god, oh my god, I love George Wallace. Oh, he's my favorite president in TNL, probably. At least for now, until we see other presents as well. God, I love George. <sighs> Makes my heart warm. My heart warm. I have to get more PP too. But this is our last year with him. Oh, terrible, I know. So when can we? When is this done? For the Congo? Because the Congo's pretty good overall. Pretty freaking good. Oh, two billion is not enough. I'm going to keep doing tax hikes just because it doesn't affect the growth that much. Yeah, we could have a higher GDP, but but the debt, man. It went down by 0.2%. That's not very much. For that much more money to help pay off the debt, I'm okay with it because we're going to balloon the debt probably a lot more. <sighs> Asa cracks whip through Congress. The era of the 60s in the United States have proved untold history in both the evolution and devolution of the civil rights movement in a world otherwise corrupted by the unjustices natures, unjustly natures of fascism. With the right of social leaders, Slamming the walls of traditionalism, the racial movements in America, American society has crashed and turned like a great political maelstrom. However, the greatest wave has crashed down in America this morning as the Senate officially declared as passing the American Education Separation Act, or e -A -E -S -A -E -S -A, officially proclaiming it in a state of segregation within school centers, both of them in the North and South. The American public, both supporters and opposition, has risen to proclaim their statements across the country regarding ASA. Nice. Congratulations, George. On one side of the argument, the Wallace administration stands proud of the victorious legislative achievement despite the general shock of behalf of the American public. The governor of Arkansas stands as one of the greatest supporters of, uh, in Atlanta, shock and all, having appeared in a speech in Little Rock saying President Wallace and all the good men in the administration recognize the need for tradition to uphold the greatness of the United States of America. For all Americans, and like it or not, our past has shown the need to allow separation from whites and blacks and from any cultural divides we may have. The past is our strength and our past says segregation. However, Wallace, many devotees, the Wallace have caused have marched and waved their banners, many in the nation have only found outrage in these desperate times. Already protests across the country on behalf of the Democrats and progressives in the MPP, however, even those who supported President Wallace in the past have distanced themselves in light of ASA. President Wallace's administration has well in a way grown to extremes, one national senator said, asking to remain anonymous. The rights of the states have been forgotten as fierce, grabbing towards segregation, losing every bit of freedom we've had from the federal government. Segregation today, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever. Universal segregation, we lose daily political power. Holy crap. It's, we have even had Hispanic voters too. Controversy that followed MPP for 30 weeks. Override the states. For, quite frankly, the state governments of many of the Yankees uh, states are run better, are run by utter and complete morons. They're fighting us back and forth, left and right, for segregation and just about everything else. It's time for decisive action. States rise for vital of America's experiment, but not when it threatens the union. Let's remind these idiots who's really in charge. Holy crap. Legislation means legal. Unlike it or not, segregation is future of the country. Nationwide protests at every corner, led by upstarts like MLK, school principals sneaking colored kids into white school, it seems that this country's forgotten that segregation is the law. The Wallace administration will not stand by while the law is broken. Social swing will grow. George Wallace is coming to stay. Disaster for the MPP. Nice. It's only minus 12 still. Prediction, huh? Solid South. Where we are currently. Oh, good God. We just campaigned here, too. And if I have to use const commands on uh, uh, this, that's fine too. 
President Wallace had waited eagerly, anxiously, and sometimes fearful of the possibilities of the blackmail operation. On one hand, this is one of the most lowly, deplorable actions to be committed by the man in such a high position as Wallace found himself in. On the other hand, Wallace found the prospect of nation nationwide segregation to be there, lay with his palms, waiting to be clutched for his name to go down in history as the man who overturned political ties to embrace the good traditions of the southern United States. And that darn phone ringing was one of the one thing he needed for all this to happen. Finally, the phone upon his desk began ringing as usual, annoying, but now exciting for the president. Who's here, he asked, frantically. The raspy voice answered. He's not buying into it. Silence persisted for a few critical moments, moments of building fear, tension, and fury. Why the heck not? Didn't you push hard enough and say something about guaranteeing this effing guy? What happened, Wall said. It's not that easy if we're going to keep going. We'll risk being found out, at the very least. We know one thing at the moment. He's not backing down no matter what I threw against him. He doesn't believe in the slightest that we dare leak the information that we're just disguising, that this will all be a bluff that would blow over. And that's a censored version of what he had to say, the raspy voice uh, responded. Bad word. So with all this build up, what are options? And the president said, rubbing the stress out of his forehead. In tough spots like this, this operation of ours could take two different routes. Either we comply, do as he says, backing down, not return to winter, we have more dirt on him. The other direction would be to fire the loaded gun, sneak at the info, have him destroy him where he stands, hopes to God that he doesn't crawl back into the fight. The president was left in a frustrated state of stress and worry, with hopes that his heart would give out after this. Either we swing with what we have, we have or we back off either way, we could absolutely be screwed over. The clock is ticking before the man to, uh, had to hang up to avoid connection. Do not turn out right for you. Heed my warning, George. How would we destroy it? You know what? Let's see what happens. Expose the bastard's bastard. Well, we want other parts. We'll see. Over other states. A fire which burns spreads. Plan on set. Strap is sprung. Oh, you bet it was. The gun was fired. The fire's been lit. The state of Pennsylvania was, will soon be engulfed with the face of that Japanese bastard branded into the hearts, minds of every citizen in the gosh darn district. The league has managed to do an exceptional job from within her administration to go on the full offensive and open the pathway to the possibility of a segregated north. And after so long, President Wallace shall break the obstacles and pave his way forward after all them fighting, or so he had thought. President Wallace and Vice President LeMay sat in the Oval Office watching the black and white screens within the TV sets of the office. There they saw speeches turn into protests, turn into riots, all in the span of a day. As more people fought and blood and died within the span of a few hours. Banners were waved and burned, displaying the President's face adorned with the words slander and corrupt. As far as they were concerned, the people of America had finally been brought out in full outrage, however not by the possibility of segregation, but rather the rules of a game which had been played in Washington for decades. One newscaster over another described the situation in Pennsylvania as being pure chaos, as fights between Pennsylvanians erupted defending the senator and his child defending the president's actions, and the police trying to maintain law and order in the broken social situation they found themselves in, even on the congressional floor. Representatives posture the prospect of illegality within the actions of the President Wallace, while senators rushed to defend their honor by standing behind the disgraced Democrat from Pennsylvania. President Wallace waltzed behind his desk and nearly fell in his chair. He nearly broke open one of the drawers, taking out a flask and two shot glasses. Well, we're going against the world, right? He asked Melamay, raising a glass of whiskey to his vice president. The disgraced general grabbed the glass and downed the drink quickly before the men rushed for another. We won't fall on their terms. Good God, no. We're going to go all the way as much as we can. Prediction? Still only minus 12. Solid South. Oh my god. Hey, we'll see what happens, you know. Arkansas governor resegregates his state. Surprise announcement this morning the governor of Arkansas announced he'd be reinse reinstating segregation in the state. Orville followed this. Fashion speaker. Oh, Cameron collapses. Oh, whatever. Um, <clears throat> Passion support of the segregation of President Wallace declared that with Wallace's blessing, he would allow local business to restore separate black and white facilities and would be ordering formerly desegregated schools to remove all non white students immediately. His declaration was met with cheers by a crowd waving pro segregation Confederate banners. It comes as a surprise to President Wallace that they gave no such a direct blessing for the governor to restore segregation so soon. Not every barrier at segregation's restoration has been removed, though. And with Brown v. Board so technically in place, the matter of resegregating the schools in particular could prove extremely legally problematic. Naturally, the governor's decree has sparked protests by civil rights activists across Arkansas and fierce outcry from black parents whose children have suddenly found themselves turned out of school. Segregation is a delicate matter in this current stage and age of America, and Falbus is clear that it caused many issues indeed. He's jumped the gun has caused problems, and which I have read that before, but yeah, it could cause some major problems for us. And what does the voter base think? They're extremely happy with segregation, unhappy about states' rights, but you know, whatever. It's only May. It's almost June. Pull out of Africa? When in doubt, I don't pull out. But whatever, you don't need to know that. <sighs> Universal segregation. Was it worth it? That's for you to decide, dear viewer. That's for you to decide. I, I've made my peace. I should get more coffee, too. Ah, yes. Let's see to West Africa. It's done. The West African War is over. All across New, across the new nations found in the wake of the PLAF collapse. Hundreds of thousands have been displaced in entire towns raised from maps. Orphans roam the land searching for parents who would never come home. America's theater to triumph. There'll be no true victory until liberty spread its wings over the nations it has won. 
The nations of West Africa and exiles of France cry for help. They argue that only America's involvement in the reconstruction can save West Africa for itself, or a part of the corporations like Firestone and DuPont are chomping at the bit to exploit their resources in the region. President Wallace has ensured the aid, initial aid packages and projects, and it's up to us to ensure that we hold West Africa humanely. It's a hard task. The people of the U.S. believe that they are up to the task of helping these people rebuild and rise from the ashes to stop. Does the administration ensure that this belief does not remain a metaphysical object? The torch of liberty passes, my friends. Oh, shnikes. Um, do the best to heal them as much as possible. Good God, it's going to suck, isn't it? A lot of money. Black students file the governor. Admits the resegregation of the Arkansas schools. One institution, of course. Ooh. Uh, has chosen to buck the trend. It seems like the school that caused for Governor Falbus a great deal of consternation once more. Little Rock Central High. In the 50s, it was decided much further when the implementation of Brown v. Board about Falbus. First, he attempted to resist the desegregation of Arkansas by physically blocking black students from entering the building before he was removed from under direct orders from President Eisenhower. Now, it's a thorn in his side once again. After a bit of argument between staff, black students, and the parents, and with some encouragements from the more sympathetic teachers, the African American kids were allowed to re enter the school in direct defiance to governor, the Governor's order. They have declared that they have the right to be there no matter what some no-god, no-good, ignorant, racist pig might think, as one student put it. Governor Falbus is reportedly maintaining medically concerning levels of fury and is already making plans to send the police and even the National Guard to the school to forcibly remove the students. Such a large and, let's say, disproportionate response is very certain to cause an uproar. This could get out of hand very, very quickly. Get Falbus on the phone, we got it. One talk. angry dude in a lengthy phone call, President Walls raised bitter fury upon Governor Falbus, calling his actions childishly rash and potentially damaging to the cause of segregation all across America. Falbus was apologetic for jumping the gun, but insisted that he had no intentions of backing down, pointing out that he didn't now have the right to send him to the National Guard as per Walls' reforms, a fact which Walls accepted bitterly. The two eventually discussed how to prevent the situation from spiraling out of control. Falbus insisted that he had experience and expertise to handle the matter on his own initiative, to which Wallace a sarcastically remarked he had worked out just so amazingly so far. Wallace demanded that Falbus law and put the National Guard under federal control for the operation as far as better managed and prevent any of the first of their escalation. He also suggested reinforcing the ranks with the reserves in the U.S. Airborne Forces, believing that their presence could deter the protesters and convince them to back down quickly. Now it was Falbus' turn to be angry, questioning why a man so determined to de-escalate the situation would consider staying in the military forces. There you go for another half hour or so, each sticking to the proposed solution and finally eventually the decision was made. I'm going to leave the guard under state control. Nothing bad will happen, right? Not right? So we're really trying to prove everything here in West Africa. Economic progress is 7.5%. It ain't too bad. Um, which I don't know why we're just focusing on free France. We should be focusing on everything here. So, but whatever. Right, De Gaulle. S signatory of the uh, West African Alliance. Oh, stand off at Central High School. When the little students, a little, when the students of Little Central. Uh, Little Rock Central High School arrived at the school that morning. They found the National Guard already waiting for them. The guard waved through the white students. They while they turned away the black, and an outrage quickly erupted. The students' parents joined their voices to the children's anger. As word spread throughout the town, countless men and women soon showed up and to add to the dim. Within a few hours, the massive protests had gathered. The National Guard now stood sandwiched between them and the school. And it seems reminiscent of the most heated days of the Civil Rights Movement. The crowd demanded equality and justice, yelling chants and waving banners at the armed guard who could do not but hold formation in front of the entrances to the school. As the clock struck 12, the heat of the Arkansas afternoon brought the crowd to a fever pitch. A small group of counter protesters arrived at Hall Abuse at the demonstrators, which only added to the tension. Facing a cacophony of fury and boxing in from all sides, the National Guard slowly began to lose their patience. Amidst the chaos, Little Rock had become a tinderbox. All that it would take to deny the situation was a single spark. Please don't do anything stupid, but roots. Feeding my family on a factory wage? Get real, John. How the heck am I supposed to do that when the bosses in suits spend it all in swanky penthouses in New York? But the only thing in Quran is Mick in the army, and they don't pay him all that much either, but I'm glad he's in Australia. I don't know what to tell him if he saw how rough things were getting here in Michigan. Now, he didn't hear it from me. He can't speak honestly these days unless he wants social crucifixion, but it's a gosh darn shame where the country's going. And I'm supposed to be one of the better ones off. I still have a car, house, and vacation, but after me, the, the way those uppity hippies and welfare babies act, I'm going to be paying for their breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Sometimes we baptize adults at church, symbolizing they're joining a wider community of believers in God. Now, I wonder if we baptize anybody. Who would, who would welcome them? The pews empty out every year, and children turn their backs on God for rock and roll, and the politicians aren't helping either. Sometimes I think they encourage godlessness. They used me up for a war no one remembers. I went to war thinking I'd serve my country in freedom, but I ended up with an arm gone and a discharge later to remember me by. I don't regret serving with honor, but I regret being used by those with none. And Phyllis Schleffy understands that. I apologize for reading so fast. I just want to get through a lot of this. and There's a lot to get through, especially before... I still want to get to heart. Also, at the time of recording, there's going to be another hotfix coming out. Um, at the time of recording, it was today, supposedly. Um, but, uh, yeah, there might be bugs, fixes for Philip Hart. We'll, we'll see. Tragedy of Central High, the shots were heard around America. Uh, after altercation between student protests and the National Guard became increasingly tense, one prominent activist marched to the forefront of the action, yelling, rallying cries in the faces of the assembled troops. The activists and their surrounding followers became more and more impetuous. 
As her demands for entrance became more forceful, one of the guardsmen became increasingly twitchy as the leader approached him. As she cried out for quality, he snapped. He would later claim to have felt threatened by her presence. Others would ask how an armed and armored white man could possibly feel threatened by a young black student who just wanted to learn. The crowd froze as the shot rang out. The guardsman, his gun in hand, the act of his blood and dying, falling to the ground in the chaos. Some ran in chair, others charged forwards in fury. Now in complete panic, the other guards released more shots on the crowd in a desperate attempt to restore control. Two more young protesters would be dead by the end of the day. One brick thrown by an outraged student would send one of the guards into a coma from which he would never wake. As the chaos unfolded across Central High, just as soon as it would across all a little rock and throughout America, the first journalists arrived on the scene. The images they would capture, the blood of the blood and the dust and the bodies of students and the terrified children watching from the school windows, would soon be broadcast across the nation. America would bear witness to what became known as the tragedy of Central High, and the wrath those scenes would unleash would uh, wash all across the land from the lowest streets to the highest seats of office. Oh, good God. Well, you know... Ah, the next 68 Republican Democrat primaries. It all come down to this. In a few days in the International Amphitheater in Chicago, Illinois, the primaries are over. The delegates have been selected, and now it's time to see who will lead the Republican Democratic Coalition in the 1968 elections. There are only two can viable candidates in a race that have seen many trying to win the keys to the White House. The Arizona Senator and proud firebrand conservative like Barry Goldwater and the, or the conscience of the Senate, Michigan's Philip Hart. For months, in debates on TV and radio, at rallies from coast to coast, and living in the rooms and over the dinner tables of everyday Americans, the battle between Barry and Hart has raged. Pins with their faces and slogans like, In your heart you know he's right, and Take Heart, posters and newspaper ads, cardboard hats, uh, and the memorabilia of a campaign seeking to win the chance to be the RDC banner standard bearer. Both are claiming that only they can end the an anomaly that is a pre national progressive coalition George Wallace, who now sits at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. But before they can focus on the MVP, they have got to get the nod at the convention. But the night drags on, and the ballots after ballot shows little movement between Goldwater and Hart. Finally, one of the few favorite sons left on the ballot. They're only there because some delegates hope that, against hope, that their chosen candidate would serve as a compromise candidate. Finally, fold us with the last ballot. The result is clear. Philip Hart. Which I will do under Barry Goldwater. I want to play, you know, the United States again. I know that the United States is probably going to get even more content and, you know, stuff updated eventually, but I want to try a, a lot more American presidents out, but still. The shadow of tragedy, the fingers, uh, are pointing, pointing both high and low. Governor Falvis is naturally taking a lot of the blame and is currently fiercely resisting demands to resign, but the media, for the most part, is pointing their fingers at, uh, daggers at, Wallace. Ooh. Oh, that sucks. The other face segregation revealed, and Wallace oversees massacre of children, and there's just some of the headlines being rolled around by every newspaper in the country. The present segregation policies have been directly blamed for encouraging the catastrophe riots of like which have not been seen since the depths of the civil rights have broken out across the South and North alike. The media has called particular attention to President Wallace allowing Governor Falvis free use of the National Guard. By allowing his attack dog Falvis to use the National Guard force against peaceful demonstrators, Wallace's lack of responsibility has only allowed the worst proponents of segregation and the ability to wreck mayhem under their political opponents. The burning heat of unrest across the country is reflected in every branch of the government. For the first time in a very long time, the Republicans, the Democrats, and Progressives all united together, united in outrage of the President, carelessly, carelessly allowing a military force against American citizens to further segregation submissions. As the right attempts to mount whatever defense it can, calls have rang out for both sides of the aisle for a formal inquiry, beginning against President Wallace and from multiple sources, one word no president ever wants to hear muttered on an hourly basis. Impeachment. It's terrible, it's the end of my presidency, I'm screwed. Back to Africa. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Second time? For decades, the Congo existed only as a colony of the Reich, or more accurately, as a personal five from the mercenary Siegfried Müller and his own brutal, uncaring regime, committed to nothing more than sophisticated than ruthless uh, exploitation of the region's natural resources and its people for the benefit of the Germania and, of course, to Mueller's own proclivities and whims. The collapse of the Reichs Commissariat at Zentor, Africa, brought some glimmers of hope for the future of the region, but now these glimmers have come to nothing as the Congo collapses into the chaos of the civil war being fought on a continental scale, and with equally titanic stakes for the superpowers seeking to shake and stake their own claims to the heart of Africa. The Congolese Republic is our ally in the region, a government committed to bringing the light of a Republican government and democracy to the ravaged lands of the Congo, and therefore we have elected to Agreed to the request to throw our support behind the struggle to arena the Congo under their flag. Supplies of armaments and other materials will soon be underway, and we are already examining our options for troop deployment to the region. The war to defend democracy in South Africa was not a popular one, as uh, we have no reason to believe that sending our men and armaments to the Congo will be any more warmly received by the Congress or the public, but for the sake of preserving African democracy, to say nothing of our own interest in the bounty of the Congo, we have no choice but to go down this road once again. The OFM will bring democracy to the Congo and its interests, which I don't know why this is showing the... Java region? Was it West Indies? When this looks, when this is West Africa? But whatever. Victory deadline, huh? We need 100% for each. Um, so Congolese Civil War. God freaking dang it. Are you kidding me? We're back here in Africa. After everything we've done, well, these sons are guns. Good God. Prediction? Still only minus 13. That's not bad. For everything that we've done, we've done really well. Um, if we look at home front, no one cares. Smoke and mirrors, though, 50%, 57%. Um, nothing there, nothing there. 
Oh, maybe it's five. I've got plenty of those people there. Maintain social spending. Leadership approval. It's fine, we can do that. We don't have that much political power, so we can do that just a little bit. Polls are updated, that's fine, whatever. Our director staff, federal troops, deployed a Little Rock to enforce the uh, uh, Wallace administration's legislation on school segregation. Open fire is more than protesters marching in Little Rock Central High School to protest the recent expulsion of all African American students. Shooting occurs a protest calling for black from approaching the school by counter protesters in support of the decision, with federal troops attempting to separate the two groups. Local hospitals reports that 14 African American protesters were killed and another 36 were injured, and with no reports of hospitalizations from the predominantly white counter protesters. Pentagon officials declined to comment on today's events, only saying the soldiers involved exercised appropriate restraint in response to an increasingly violent situation. The National Association for the Advancement of Colored People have condemned the actions of federal troops, claiming that the shootings were the latest display of barbarity by a government that has, with a wink and a nudge, violently opposes unjust segregation in the name of justice and order. While Little Rock has only reported sporadic violence after local authorities declared the curfew of the immediate effect, the impact of the incident spread rapidly with protests and looting have been reported in New York, Detroit, Boston, Birmingham, Chicago, and Baltimore, where protest leaders calling for immediate investigation and the conduct and orders given to federal troops involved in the shooting. Sen senior RDC members in Washington and members of the Progressive Caucus have issued a statement that will demand an immediate explanation for the Pentagon and the Bright House in the coming days. Um, the coming days will be hard. Why did they... That doesn't make any sense. Open fire on protesters marching at Little Rock Central High School? What? That, that's, that's really unbelievable on my part, but Arkansas demands an investigation. In response, the protesters gather daily outside the state capitol, the police, state police, increasingly overwhelmed by controlling nighttime riots. The governor of Arkansas has announced the state governor will conduct its own investigation of the conduct of federal troops during the Little Rock shootings. In his remarks, the governor openly questioned the Wallace administration's decision to deploy federal troops in the state, blaming unclear orders and a lack of familiarity with local practice for disaster shootings. Wallace's aides shared concerned glances with each other as the president's face is twisted into a scowl. The chief of staff shut the TV off before the president returned to his attention to his immediate surroundings. Mr. President, you know how bad this looks. We have to get ahead of this problem by opening a federal investigation before Congress and Arkansas saw drawn unwarranted conclusions. Wallace noticed so the optics of American soldiers shooting each other or shooting other Americans in the streets were too earnest to be ignored, and he knew that while the bullets were circling low, all that matters was now the damage control and getting the federal government to take charge of investigation for the Arkansas state government could start collecting evidence. Starting from Wallace's phone call to the governor before the entire mess started. Lock it all down and throw in action. We made it clear that this administration will not stand out of the by while the law is broken. We have made clear that segregation is a feature of the American education system. We've done just about everything we can. If we can hard to quell the unrest plaguing America, we must make clear that this administration will do what needs to be done. Make it clear to the nation that should the need arise, we'll mobilize the National Guard and enforce segregation. South and never forget our loyalty. Just remember that. Jim Crow's clutch. The Bloodhounds. A day after the government announced that the Pentagon would be taking charge of investigating the conduct of troops in the Little Rock shooting, Wallace found himself waiting impatiently for his chief of staff to return to a meeting on Capitol Hill. It's clearly being delayed by angry congressional leaders, most likely being wrecked over with the coals for Little Rock, but so long as the MPP didn't take rank ranks, they'd just be fine once the military and the Justice Department secured all the evidence in Arkansas. His chief of staff rushed from the Oval Office. Short of breath, clearly flustered, he could barely manage a stammer. Congress has the transcripts of your call of the governor, he sold us out before people could secure the evidence. Wallace reeled him Congress? They're buying the governor's store and that, that wasn't adequately consulted or informed by the federal troops mission before the shootings. Wallace offered the chief of staff some water, but he refused, continuing on. The progressives are going to agree on an inquiry in the House of Representatives. Investigation is not in our hands anymore, and we're going to be called to give testimony at some point. Wall swore. Dogs of Congress that smell blood, and that was going to make everything more complicated. Perhaps it was time to take the argument directly to the people? Uh, pulling the heartstring. Maybe we can serve Patsy. Ah, no. Our efforts, President Wallace's efforts, the administration's efforts, everyone's efforts to provide the citizens of America with a greater voice and choice in the direction of their lives within the U.S. has not been fought for in vain. Consistently, the federal government has taken up way too much power for themselves without feeling concerned for the average American. But throughout all of our efforts, we have secured each and every right possible for the American citizen in a bloodly, exhausting war of attrition against a strong position of freedom within the United States. And even now, after all we've done to serve them as, serve them as the leaders of the country, the unyielding liberals in the North Polk and Prague calling Wallace, President Wallace, Jim Crow's clutch in an effort to portray backwardness rather than our administration's upholding of freedom and tradition. Is it not right? I have not worked to simply try to maintain American society morals uh, and rights for the individual. Pull out the heartstrings. Only with a day left here, most, before President Wallace is addressing the nation, the administration finds itself split on how to best approach a statement. That could be the most politically consequential speech of President Wallace's political career. With this nation continuing to convulse from the daily protests increasing violence, the safest avenue would be to issue a blanket statement for public unity as the investigation, both congressional and federal continue. Even if people are still skeptical of Wallace's good faith, the statement might be enough to buy, tie the MPP together, buying more time for the administration to craft its defense in Congress. Others have to for a more confrontational approach, from claiming that the entire mess isn't Wallace's fault and pinning it on the military discipline, to continuing to advocate for law and order and ignoring the administration's role in this crisis. While elements of these approaches would allow us to directly challenge facts of the case, or in some case the latter, try to get back out of the business of actually governing America. The response of our allies and the MPP to say nothing of public opinion will most likely be sharply be negative. There's only one shot to get this right. 
Triangulation emphasis on right now. Um, nation has to come together. And not the orders given. What? Just send guys there. Oh, to the top one. Why not? Progressive primaries. Triangulation. Uh, I think I read this one before, so if you don't need this one, please go ahead. Four more years. And that's your entire plan, Mr. President. Just pretend that nothing happened. The MPP senator was in a whip ass and credulous. The country's got to sit down and get back to business, and we're all got bigger things to worry about than riding over something we've already investigated, Wall said. I wish you the best of luck, Mr. President, the senator replied, curtly storming out of the room. Wall's chief of staff, increasingly haggard after days of managing the administration's response to the crisis, will be ready to snap. It ain't working, Mr. President. We're not going to get the MPP to come along with us like this. Wall's turn on the staff. Do you have a better plan? We're not rewriting the darn statement in four hours. Chief of Staff pleaded with the President. No, but we have some time to mix in a few more facts. If we can hold on just a bit longer, maybe we'll find something that might support our assertion. The truth felt that they were in danger due to the violence from the protesters and counter-protesters that day. Just enough facts to make our case more convincing will make it seem like both sides were at fault. A few more hours are short as the people leave. Vacuum, huh? Politics is say with a core is a vacuum. In the absence of any statement from the White House concerning the Little Rock shootings or the developments of the House afterwards, the media's buzz with half checked truths. Conspiracy theories and rumors about the role of our administration played in this chain of events. The most popular story circulating in the news cycles alleges that even if we didn't order the troops to shoot in Little Rock, the general bent of our civil rights policies will suggest we aren't terribly bothered by the shooting that resulted in their silence confirms their narratives. However, much of the administration agrees with that statement is besides the point. If someone else is writing the story and that refusal of President Walsh to get involved with with even a proposing counter narrative as leading the legislators and the MPP scrambling to put together a response, which is a, a slipshod at best and incoherent at worst. Naturally, the MPP Congressional Caucus is furious. This would be bad enough if it was just a media bang for blood and the MPP demanding action, but the nation as a whole remains royal with anger and recrimination. Civil rights marches are being organized on an almost daily basis, and curfews or curfews are being increasingly placed across the South, and tensions between the African American and white communities exploding from on our watch. You didn't do anything, man. Soon it's justify, huh? Oh, look at that. Empty suits. Hot weather. The Hershey executives landed on Bamako this morning and went on the way to the nascent plantations growing on the peripheries of Mali. When they arrived, they saw these budding saplings, rows upon rows of them budding with the promise of prosperity held on the tips of the leaves. Cocoa. A commodity that Hershey has contended with the Mexican Brazilian monopolies for so long was now available for them exclusively. The men threw high fives along their jeeps and saluted the shabby forms in between the rows of plants. A local Malian general was, hot host was hosting their lunch and was sweltering sub-Saharan heat. Uh, like dine on spiced rum and chicken, meat cooked in peanut butter, stews, and smoked fish. Thank you for the opportunity, the uniform officer said. Molly grows strong with each passing day. They look at the plantation from their lunch tables. That's a mutually beneficial agreement, General, one of the executives said. More to come. A pause. Speaking of, how are you going to find the labor for these complexes? Leave it to me, the General cursed I know exactly where to find them. Hands are shaking. Money's passed around. Good. Very good. Subsidized Firestone expansion. Students testify, live from the steps of the Capitol in Washington, D.C., in the most recent investigations in the Little Rock Central High School, the House has decided to formally set up a trial to investigate President Wallace's actions during the ordeal, in an effort to root out any wrongdoings doings of the President's behalf, which could lead to a trial of impeachment for President Wallace. Reports indicate that the first set of witnesses have been called forth by the House of Representatives' trial. These witnesses are being the African-American students involved in the protest to testify against the Wallace administration. Within the House chamber, the Speaker of the House had officially begun appointing managers of the case to begin hearing of evidence presented by the students present at the massacre at Little Rock. There, they make an already emotionally heartbreaking story abundantly clear for the American people. We're finally making it to the high school's front door, said Percy Jameson, one of the witnesses, in the middle of the bloodshed. We were met by protesters who fought against the movement. They did not want us walking into that high school, shouting things like, get the blacks back out of the fields. Eventually, the shouting escalated into fighting, as while we marched, several of my fellow students were punched, kicked, and hit over the head with signs, sometimes even bricks. And that's when, Percy takes a minute here, his voice cracking and choking before he says it, that's when the troops came. They came and beat everyone back. Some of them looked confused and scared like us, but some of them looked like they hated us. When, when the ones hurting us continued to push forward, they opened fire. Percy's calm for several months after breaking down in tears. News teams are spread wide and far as the situation within the capital continues to develop. More students turn protesters, turn victims off to their side of the story and with the continuously developing situation. Only time will tell what the outcome will be for President Walls after all this. Kid never said I did it. And that's the most important thing. The guardsmen testify now. Oh, God, God. Be more command power. Um... I'll go with this one. There we go. Maxwell Taylor, huh? Alright, so we can send what? What can we send? We can't send anything, god dang it. 
Guardsmen testify. The investigation of the mass shooting in Little Rock of just a few days ago continues with the House today. As representatives have decided to call forth the next set of witnesses to offer testimony, the National Guardsmen involved in the massacre of the high school. Reports indicate that this involves guardsmen who actively opened fire in the crowd, as well as those who never partook in the shooting, as well as senior officials or officers involved in the response to escalation events that day. Officials from the White House or the House Judiciary Committee began receiving testimony from several of the guardsmen to judge official uh, involvement in the enforcement of the order to open fire on the crowd of protesters. The second platoon of the 216th Military Police Company within the state of Arkansas have been ordered to enforce federal laws in regards to segregation of the Southern to segregation of education centers in both Arkansas and the southern United States. First Lieutenant Victor Thornton, a commanding officer of the Union Station at Little Rock Central High School, stated that the events that followed were an applied event, applied attempt at controlling the situation which fell into disorder. Many representatives were caught gasping and whispering, following what sounded like the commanding officer's approval of the actions at Little Rock, another member of the unit. Corporal Douglas N. McConnell delivered a nobly different testimony saying, I was standing between a few other guys in the unit. I was scared to death, same as the protesters out there. Punches were being thrown, people were gnashing at their teeth, screaming, I swore, a brick almost knocked my eye out, he says. It was all getting too bad too fast, unless the personnel and officers were yelling just the same, until eventually someone yelled fire and it all went. He said, tears swelling in his eyes, and his voice cracking, it all went to hell. Everyone started firing. I was only so scared I could not, couldn't even feel my finger against the trigger. I only found out after that I didn't even fire around, the guardsman said, tears rolling down his face. Washington is a state of fear and panic at the moment. However, no matter what, the government has promised that those responsible will answer for their actions at Little Rock Central High School and make sure every victim is compensated for their loss. Still didn't hear my name in there, though. And that's the most important part. Staff testify. After the emotional hearings were those struck or stuck in the middle of bloodshed at Little Rock a few days ago, followed by the shock and eye-opening testimony given by the members of the National Guard involved in the shooting itself, the House of Representatives has decided to call upon a third and final set of witnesses to offer testimony. As what happened that people day, today, the staff of the Wallace administration and the staff of the state government of Arkansas testify and provide any possible connections from the two governments into the involvement of the deaths of those 14 students. Uh, the first staff member called up to the stand of the House Judiciary Committee is calling for the Secretary of Public Safety from the Gar Government of Arkansas to offer insight into the Arkansas government's involvement. The Department of Public Safety recognizes the failures which led to the shootings which occurred at the Little Rock Central High School. And the field's extreme regret in their actions that day, the Secretary said. The escalation from peaceful protest to outright massacre did not happen intentionally in any form within the state government of Arkansas. We simply could not prepare for something so fast and so horrible to occur within such a short time frame. After several more members of the state government were heard, I also moved on to the big names of the ring. Federal staff members of the Wallace administration. The United States and the Wallace administration feel strongly in regards to the status of segregation of the education system and the actions of the protesting students of that day, one figure within the Wallace administration said, whose name had been asked to be removed for its protection. But just because we disagree with allowing the students in does not mean we authorize massacres to prevent their entrance. One representative stated that they were shocked and said they were left feeling gross by the staff member of the Wallace administration's statements, defending segregation during the aftermath of a butchery which happened thanks to that stance. With the House formally ending its call for witness testimony, the representatives have officially begun the process of deciding whether to forward the collection of evidence towards the articles uh, towards the Senate as articles of impeachment for President Wallace. Someone get that little dude's name. Still didn't do it. And they move forward. An arousing day for the American political sphere. The House has officially decided the verdict in regards to investigation and collected evidence in the happenings between Little Rock Central High School massacre, as many of the media decided to do the shooting. The Speaker of the House has decided to formally overturn the investigation to the Senate to begin the trial of George C. Wallace in regards to his involvement in the killing of 14 African American students and injury 36 more. The word impeachment rings out in a familiar tune for the people of the United States at this point, so nevertheless, everyone has grown to stand firm in their beliefs regarding the massacre. Those darn students were told to back down, and guess what? They didn't. A set of protesters in support walls, alongside several men and women adorned with a uh, shirt saying, Walls will win. That's not right to blame the president for the shooting. Those troops with an itchy trigger tri tri finger itchy trigger finger are the ones who killed them, and those students shouldn't have been there in the first place. However, others have different opinions in regards to the trial for the impeachment for the president, as many support of the protesters had gathered in Washington to condemn the president. What Walls did was an absolute disgrace for the United States. Whether they fired the shots in the crowd or not, he could have avoided this if he just let those children in, a man screams, waving around a banner with the words, Racists remain responsible. Overall, I think there's a huge part missing for everyone supporting Walls after what happened to Little Rock. Those were school kids, children, looking to walk in and get taught science and mathematics and English for whatever, for Christ's sakes. As the Senate prepares to formally investigate George C. Wallace and his administration for the possible action, or possible lack thereof, the nation continues to stand by as it drowns the blood of 50 victims. Darn criminals in the White House? Well, that's certainly an opinion. Depends on what you see. A judicial ammo. Law, the wait was long, arduous, even as the daily tasks of the president become exhausting for President Walls. However, no matter what level of exhaustion was he was at, anger flowed through the veins of the president, coursing through uh, him with every flash of a camera and every reporter screaming in, outside his office. Did you authorize the shooting, President Walls? Surrounded by a team of the best attorneys within the United States, as law professors of Harvard, those who defended previous presidents, and some of them within the shiny gold awards. Out. Shining go to war. All of them is civil within the Oval Office of Prayer Defense with the President of the United States dealing with the possible removal of office after massacre that stormed the nation that he had no part in. Literally no part in. And gentlemen, as you all uh, know very well, these are difficult times we live in, and firmly I believe what I've done, I can embolden this nation after year, decades of fear and mistrust. 
But now I'm sure you have all seen the media as during this whole thing in Death Circus with me is the biggest punchline of the joke and with the house already against me I need your help from the old dudes in the Senate. What can we do? The President be said to begin the discussions after those discussions not only began but stretched on for hours. Everyone in the White House felt like they were subject to being torn apart by the horde of new journalists and protesters that had formed within the Capitol over the past few days. Whether it was rocks in the walls of Robert Baird's office or when Lorene Wallace dropped the bowl of soup she had just made from the fright of seeing a reporter press up against the window behind her. The White House was torn apart in a state of fear and anxiety as the only noises that sounded were the telephone ring. The lawyer discussing with the yelling the president behind the closed door of the Oval Office and the onslaught of angry citizens and relentless reporters harassing the surrounding area. Finally, the president's team of attorneys uh, emerged from the Oval Office, akin to a group of knights looking to wage battle against the castle next door with pens and legalistic language with the swords and shields. Now, no scare tactic from the media can slow down the defendant as part of the court. The Senate wants war, they'll get it. MLK, oh, this is great. MLK Jr. Uh, has just died too. It's out of control. Great. Now we're getting no political power. Our to anchor. Uh, the air inside of the center chamber today was heavy tense. Sometimes you could feel the anchor present in the room. However, it was, at least it wasn't stale. President Wallace looked around at his jury, the most powerful legislative body in the United States federal government, and all seemed to be looking back at the defendant. The senior, most experienced Supreme Court justice had taken the head of the trial, and soon proceedings would begin. However, despite the going on situation, Wallace knew one thing. If anything, do not be scared, do not be a coward, do not let anyone sway you to falling, in any case, be angry. May the uh, Senate of the United States of America rise to the Pledge of Allegiance, the Supreme Court justice spoke. Everyone rose to recite the pledge, including President Walls, laying his hand against his heart in pride for his nation. Speaking loudly and confidently, please take your seats at judge order. Today, the United States Senate will begin proceedings for uh, House Resolution 519, formally entitled the impeaching of President Walls in conjunction with the submittance of evidence provided by the House of Representatives. It is now the Senate's duty to proceed with the investigation of the United States President George C. Walls after the occurrence of the Little Rock Central High School massacre to investigate the possibility of mismanagement resulting in the deaths of 14 students and the injury of 36 others. Walls was growing more frustrated by the minute. I happened to watch the old man fumble around and wading through these proceedings. It was an innocent man, he knew it, and those darn senators couldn't see it, and the U.S. is doomed. Uh, the prosecution in this case is the representatives chosen to represent the federal investigation shall proceed and stay in their open argument. The opening argument of the prosecution was an absolute disaster, in the eyes of President Wallace at least. Accusations of potential action waste by attribution of the president's fervor and segregation is believed caused the gosh darn massacre which, when he wasn't even in the same state for Or better yet, President Wallace's administration led a disastrous mishandling of the situation, resulting in the deaths of several innocents. The defense, the, the defense in this case, President Wallace and his legal team shall make their opening statement. A stock difference between the National Guard and President Walls. Therefore, the blame lies with in the actions of mismanagement of local powers. In conclusion, the protest group that formed Little Rock was illegal and thus received the full implication of the law. Um, but I think we'll end it there because we can keep going with this in the next episode as we're going to continue helping out West Africa. But if you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. Let me know what you're thinking about this campaign so far, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll continue helping out the Congo, the Wallace administration, and seeing how the election is going to turn out. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.